Having the right office setup can make a huge difference on your productivity. In this video, I'm going to show you the must-have equipment for your office, whether you're working from home or whether you're going back into the office. I'm also going to show you some of the stuff I've spent money on that wasn't really worth the time or the effort. So all great offices start with a solid foundation, and I chose Evo Desk as the foundation of my office. It's a motorized desk and I mean, it's a desk, you know, it's really hard to get excited about, but I do like this one motorized so that I can go from sitting down to standing up throughout the day and stay comfortable. But also this is completely configurable. So you can add different types of attachments or configurations on here to meet your personal style. And then there's all kinds of attachments and mounting brackets and things underneath here so that you can secure all of your cables and keep everything tucked away and pretty tidy looking whenever you come in and look at your office. When it comes to chairs, I've actually spent thousands of dollars on chairs and I'm still not happy. I've got this chair that's just sort of like a bar stool that I use sometimes and I have this chair which actually came from Staples. I mean, I think for the most part, they're probably both just fine. I'm just being a whiny little person about chairs. So I also have an anti-fatigue mat to stand on when I have my desk in stand-up mode. And I bought this one from Veradesk. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I paid like a hundred bucks for it. So while it does a really good job, I can't really say that it does any different than the $10 mat that I have in my kitchen. So I'm a big fan of the stand-up mats or the anti-fatigue mats, but the $10 ones seem to work just as well as the $100 ones. So my primary computer is my MacBook Pro. And look, I'm not an Apple fanboy. I just like the fact that it just works. As a DevOps engineer, I spend a lot of time in a terminal or SSH into remote servers. So I need like a native terminal and after four decades, Windows still doesn't have one that feels like it's meant to be there. Now, Linux, on the other hand, obviously has a built-in terminal. You know, it's made from the terminal or the console up, but the things that I do in the GUI feel like clunky add-on features. So Mac seems to have the best of both worlds and it comes in a price, but it seems to me that the price is worth it. For my monitor, I use an LG 5K monitor. The thing I like about this is it's got a lot of real estate and I can almost use it as two separate monitors by splitting it into the left and the right. And then I use an application called Divi that allows me to break out the different window panes. So I don't really know if there's a big difference between the 5K and the 4K aside from the screen real estate, you know, like as far as like image quality, I haven't really noticed anything. And I paid a lot of money for the 5K monitor. Given a choice, if I could get that resolution without paying the 5K price, I'd probably go that route. But I do like just having a single monitor versus multiple monitors. Also included in this monitor, there is the webcam that I keep covered up unless I need it. And there's speakers. The speakers sound like shit. So I have a set of Creative Labs um, speakers on my desk here. But even with that, I rarely use those for any sound system. I actually have a surround sound system in here that I use for music. So it's really just your PC-based sounds that I need speakers for. Now the monitor itself is mounted on a swing arm from Veradesk, so I can twist it, turn it, raise it, and lower it, which comes in really handy as I switch from standing up and sitting down throughout the day. So this Veradesk arm has been well worth the money, and over the several years that I've had it, it's actually been moved around a lot and it's still rock solid and very stable. So one area that is just hands down worth the money in my opinion is having a good mic and a good camera for video conferences when you're working remote. Think about it like this, whenever you're watching a movie, if it's a really good movie, you lose track of the fact that you're sitting in your living room or your bedroom or a movie theater and you're totally immersed in that scenery, no matter how unrealistic it is. And that's what you really want to try to accomplish whenever you're in a remote meeting with someone. One of the biggest barriers to remote working, which I've done for several years now, 
is the fact that people acknowledge and recognize that you're remote and it puts this mental block in the conversation. So everything you can do to remove the fact that you're remote actually just works out to your advantage. And so having great video and great audio are the two big factors in breaking that down. So for that reason, I use the Heil PR40 mic whenever I'm doing video conferences. I've experimented with a lot of mics and I keep coming back to this one. I've had it for years and years. The sound quality is great. It's very, very focused. So you pull it up close to your mouth, relatively close to your mouth, and it picks up the audio great. But if there's background noise, it generally doesn't pick that up. So whoever you're talking with isn't getting distracted by whatever's going on around you. The other thing, I keep it on a swing arm here. So whenever I'm in a conference, I pull it down. Whenever I'm done with the conference or done recording, then I just pull it up out of the way and it's out of the way. That's also the mic that I use whenever I'm recording weekly podcasts. Speaking of which, I'm a panelist on a podcast called Adventures in DevOps. So if you like listening to podcasts, be sure and check that out. And you'll get to hear from me and the other panelists on a weekly basis as we interview different people about what they're doing in DevOps and what it's like in DevOps, that kind of stuff. Now for the camera, whenever it comes to a camera and video conferencing, um, the last couple weeks I've been experimenting with the one built into the monitor here. It's a 1080p camera. A lot of times though, I just hook up the camera that I'm recording here uh, through the mini HDMI input and then I have an Elgato 4K cam link that brings that in as a video source to, um, to my computer. Now the 4K is not really necessary for a video conference if you're doing a multi-party video conference with Zoom or Slack or something like that, odds are whoever you're talking to is never going to get that 4K feed anyway. But a good 1080p camera is well worth the money. So the one built into this monitor with the right lighting seems to do okay. Of course, my Sony camera here does a great job. So 1080p or higher for video and get a good quality mic. And then those two things with some lighting, which you can just use the lighting in your office, natural lighting. Um, you just really create this great presence whenever you're doing video conferences and you get people out of that. They, they stop thinking that you're remote and they start focusing on the conversation, which is exactly what you want. Now on the back of my desk, I've got a Xenix Q802 soundboard and that's where that Heil PR mic plugs into. Aside from that, there's really nothing going on with the soundboard. I use the sound output for my speakers, um, but that's really not necessary. So I think if I had to do it over again, I would probably ditch the soundboard and either get a mic that has a USB output or just get a smaller adapter for the XLR to USB conversion. One of the things I've got that I think is totally worth the money is this CalDigit USB hub. So this has inputs for all the different flavors of USB, whether it's A, B, C, or I don't even know what some of the other ones are. It's got HDMI optical inputs, and it just results in having a lot of things or a lot of ways to plug in peripherals to my laptop, but then I only have to connect one cable to my laptop. And that cable is also USB-C, so this also provides the charging power for my laptop as well. So it makes it really nice to add a lot of capabilities to your laptop, but only have to manage one cable. Finally, down in this corner of my desk, I have a stream desk, which doesn't really apply to like day-to-day -day DevOps stuff. That's mainly just used for recording videos. Uh, I use it to control the lighting in here, control, um, you know, which camera source I've got and different things like that. Doesn't apply to day-to-day -day DevOps stuff. For my keyboard, I've got the Kinesis Advantage 2 keyboard, and this thing is a beast. Um, so it's kind of expensive, but it's got the, uh, you know, the whole mechanical keys, so it's also really loud if you're into that sort of thing. For me, the big benefit though, I've been doing this for decades, but I don't really have any carpal tunnel issues, but supposedly having this split keyboard configuration makes it more natural for your wrist. The big thing where this has made a difference for me is actually in my typing speed. I was a pretty fast typer to begin with, and now I'm even faster, and it's more comfortable to type at high speeds. Having said that, there's a steep learning curve with this keyboard. Um, it took me about six weeks to get used to it, and the first like three weeks of that, I was hating life. It was only because I had a friend who recommended this to me, 
they let me know up front that that learning curve was going to be there and they were providing reinforcement along the way, you know, encouraging me to stick with it. And all in all, I'm really glad that I did. Um, you can program the keys on this. One of the cool things, if you swap computers, once you program the keys on this, that programming is saved in the keyboard, not on your laptop. So you go plug it into any other computer and you still got all those same key bindings. And then if you're into the mechanical switch thing, you can swap out the mechanical um, keys and make it make different sounds, I guess. I don't know, not really into that sort of thing. Um, for my mouse, I just use a regular Apple trackpad. This one happens to be propped up on a book just so that it's at a similar height as the keyboard. So I mentioned that I don't really use any of the speakers for audio and that's because of these. This is the Bayer Dynamic DT880 Pro headphones. Um, as you can see, it comes with a cable. It's uh, a really long cable, which is really, really nice because I just don't need anything else in my life that needs to be charged, right? So cable, nothing to charge up, uh, long cable, but it's got really a good size ear cup so your ears fit in there. It's comfortable to wear all day long. The sound quality is phenomenal. These are all component pieces in here, so if things go wrong, you can actually get this thing repaired, which I've had this one repaired before. And then one of the nice features about this is it's an open back headphone. So when you have these on, it's not noise canceling, it's actually the opposite. You can still hear what's going on around you. So if somebody comes into my office or if the dogs knock on the door to go in or out, I can hear that even if I have audio playing through these. So love these headphones, can't recommend them enough. So the next thing I wanna bring up about my office is this, a Dell Alienware PC. And so it runs Microsoft Windows, uh, but its primary function is it, I run uh, Microsoft Hyper-V on it and launch virtual machines, which makes up my local Kubernetes cluster. And so that's kind of a cool feature to have. Definitely not a requirement because you can run uh, something like Minikube on your own workstation but it's nice for me to have the added ability to run an external Kubernetes cluster for different testing scenarios, things like that. And um, it also hooks into this sound system here, which ties into the surround sound around the room. And I'll use that for my background music in the office. Definitely not a requirement, but it's nice to have. So if you have an older PC that you can upgrade and convert laying around, that's a pretty nice upgrade to add to your office. So the last thing I'll show you is kind of a non-technical thing, but it's really actually pretty helpful for me. And that's these whiteboards here. I've got two big whiteboards because for me, like the synapses fire whenever it goes from the brain down through to my, one of my hands holding a pen or a marker. So these are actually pretty useful for me. And I didn't actually pay that much if I paid anything at all for them. It was one of the companies I was working for. They closed down um, the office we were in and relocated to Minnesota, I think. So they were getting rid of all of this office equipment. And um, I ended up with these from that. I didn't steal them. I just can't remember if, they had to, if I had to pay for them or not. It was, it was totally legal, all right? It was really legal, but they're cool whiteboards. So there you go, that's my office setup. I hope you found some stuff in there that was useful that you can use in your office, whether you're working from home or heading back into the office to work with your coworkers. Um, I'll put links to some of the stuff I showed down below. And uh, I'll also throw a link in here if you're interested in DevOps and like seeing what happens in DevOps on a day-to-day -day basis. I've got a playlist I'm working on over here that shows just like different tasks that I've done, how I approach and solve problems that you might find helpful. So be sure and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, man, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button and share it with your friends because that's how I know that I'm creating the content that's meaningful to you, which I mean, that's kind of like why I'm doing it, right? I wanna make stuff that you wanna watch because I like making stuff, you like watching stuff, I mean, we put those two together. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Know what I mean? All right, I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>